Well, we wanted to get your advice on what do you do when um, 60 Minutes crew shows up on your doorstep? Well, you should be so lucky that 60 Minutes shows up on your doorstep. <laughs> I mean, first of all, it usually is, is someone maybe not quite so famous or infamous uh, to start with. Mm -hmm. But again, I think that uh, you will find that they they found you either through a Google search because you are somehow related to a product or a service that the reporter needs more information about. Right. Uh, or perhaps you did send out a press release uh, or maybe someone gave a talk somewhere and someone told them about you uh, but you know again the first thing when a reporter calls is after you start jumping up and uh, you stop jumping up and down going oh my gosh they called me they called me they called me <laughs> uh, take a breath and find out what the story is that the reporter is writing about because if you build those angle of attack indicators and the reporter says well I'm actually writing a story for the New York Times about what big pieces of junk and wastes of time angle of attack indicators are. And I want to hear your perspective on why you think that's true. And you go, um, no, uh, let me just tell you, I, I don't agree with that statement at all. I think these are great products and let me tell you why. And then you have, you know, a couple of, uh, couple of thoughts uh, to, to be prepared with but but the most important thing I think too is that most of the time you're not going to get a call out of the blue where a reporter says I need to interview you right now right. I mean I'm on a deadline and I need your answers to some topic that maybe you haven't thought about and I need it right now uh, you can control the interview to some degree uh, often you could say Whoa, I haven't even thought about this topic or uh, and an easy way out is you know I, I can't I can't do the interview right now I'm, I'm with a client or something uh, could we do this in an hour or so or you know, or uh, later this afternoon or tomorrow morning or and most of the time they'll say sure absolutely you'll set a time they may call you or th that sort of thing and the best way to be prepared is to say now so just tell me before we meet tomorrow on the phone or however we're going to do it give me the two or three items you're you're really after that uh, so I can be bet you know as prepared as possible to answer your questions and that gives you a little time to say oh okay I, now I've got a better idea of what the person's after let me think about my my perspective on that particular topic uh, and uh, oh, and by the way, when I'm talking to this person, I want to make sure I mention, I don't know, two or three things or whatever. Um, and and it gives you a chance to take a breath, calm down, and sound like you're prepared for the reporter. Right. Absolutely. I think that's very good advice. Even you know, and sometimes the the media will approach you when you don't want to be approached. You know, if you have a flight school and you've had a a safety incident or something like that. Um, you know, you do not have to respond right away, even if they are on on the field. You know, um, you do That's want to be. That's a really good day. point. Uh, I was just uh, I was just talking at a flight safety foundation conference in uh, uh, Fort Lauderdale last week about this exact thing, because so many of the uh, companies are scared to death that if they ever have an aircraft accident or an incident, and the media calls, what do they do? Mm -hmm. And uh, it's amazing how many of them said, we're just not going to talk to them. Not, <laughs> not, not a good idea. No. And, mm -hmm. I, and that's what I told them. I said, look, the worst thing you can say is no comment. Because yes. it, even if you're not, it looks like you're hiding something. Yes. And a good reporter is going to dig. And uh, you can always say... Um, I'm I'm in the middle of something. Let, let's say it is an aircraft accident. It's a a flight training organization, and they lost an airplane out in the practice area. And at this point, uh, uh, the only reason the reporter is calling is that they monitor the local police radio, and they heard uh, you know fire trucks and ambulances being dispatched, and somehow they found out it was your airplane. Um, you can say, look, you know what, I I cannot 
give you a great deal of information. Yes, we did lose one of our airplanes. Uh, we don't know the status of the, uh, uh, the instructor and the student at this point. Uh, I can get back to you when I do know more. Uh, no, I'm not going to give you their names right now. We, we need to be you know, sensitive to the, to the families. And, and right now, honestly, it's still just crazy here because we've only just learned about this a few minutes ago ourselves. But if you want to call me in two hours, I can probably give you a better idea of what's going on and I'd give them my cell phone number or my office number uh, or if you want to give me your number I'll call you back as soon as I have something better prepared but again it gives you that chance to go <sighs> give me a chance to breathe because I, I need to take a deep breath because if, if it is an aircraft accident everybody's going to be so emotional nobody's going to be thinking straight and right. that's the worst time to try to talk to a reporter right so, you know, in a worst case scenario or even not a terrible scenario, but, you know, not great scenario, is it can help if you have kind of brainstormed these things ahead of time and maybe have some, some notes about how you're going to respond because, um, you know, chances are if you are working in a business like this, you're going to have an unhappy customer. You know, it's likely you're going to have a delay. It is likely you're going to have, you know, different things happen that people are, are going to ask you about. And if you're prepared with at least a fill in the blanks, set of notes or, or something in your head to start with, um, you know, that can really put you ahead of being a deer in the headlights here. Oh, and I think that's a really great point, Paula, and uh, along with that is deciding who's going to talk to the media. Right. Is it be the person that picks up the phone, the mm -hmm. person that gets to them, or is it only going to be uh, the boss, is it going mm -hmm. to be someone that is perhaps... Uh, uh, well educated and a little more cool and calm um, you know, in a spotlight sort of situation uh, those are things you can decide long before the phone ever rings and certainly something simple like sending out a press release who's the contact going to be and what is that person's going to tell the reporter if they do call so again, these are all things that people normally don't think about, uh, and they should be thinking about them. You know you could.